Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of C++ Data Structures, we're going to look at quicksort, which is another recursive sorting algorithm similar to merge sort. So before we actually look at the code, we're going to go over how this looks more, you know, kind of visually. So let's say we have an array of, you know, some random numbers, so say 10, 20, uh, then we can have 80, 70, or let's actually have 40, uh, then 70, and then 50. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to, of course, put this in order. And the way that merge sort works is that the first thing we'll do is we'll select a pivot element. In this case, we'll choose the last element. We could also choose the first element. Uh, doesn't really matter. So we'll, and for our implementation, we choose the last element. And then what we're going to fundamentally do every single time uh, we call this is that we'll create two subarrays, one of all the elements less than or equal to the pivot and one with all the elements greater than the pivot. And then after we've created those two subarrays, all we need to do is insert the pivot in the middle of those two, and then that pivot will be in the correct spot in sorted order. And then all we need to do is we need to take the two subarrays, and then we need to do the same process on each of the subarrays. And this will continue on and on and on until everything is sorted. So starting out, we'll see, we'll compare against you know, all these numbers kind of in a row. So we'll first look at 20. And we'll say, is 20 less than or equal to 50? In this case, it is. And so we'll keep track of the index of the last uh, element that's less than or equal to 50. So in this case, it'll be element 0. Then we'll go ahead and move forward. And we'll see, is 10 less than or equal to 50? That's true. So we'll kind of progress this barrier along again. Then we'll look at 80. 80 is not less than or equal to 50. So we don't really have to do anything. Uh, all we have to do is leave the barrier where it is because 80 is greater than. Now it's important to note that at this point uh, we know that from 0 to 1 these are all numbers that are less than or equal to 50. That doesn't look very good. And then uh, at this point since we've checked 80 but we didn't progress this barrier we know that all the numbers between these two points are the numbers greater than 50. So when we get to the next number for comparison, we'll look at 40 now. And so we know that 40 is less than or equal to 50. So what we'll end up doing is we'll end up swapping these two numbers in order to uh, be able to move this barrier over. So what will end up happening is 40 will go here, 80 will go here. We'll keep this barrier there and we'll move this barrier forward. And so now this will be from elements 0 to 2 will be uh, all the numbers that are less than or equal to 50. 2 to 3 will be all the numbers greater than 50. Uh, but we don't really need to keep track of this. We just need to keep track of all the numbers that are less than or equal to 50. But this is just, you know, overall, you know, the kind of state of our intermediate uh, broken down uh, array at this point. Uh, and then 70 right now, because we haven't looked at it yet, it's part of this kind of unknown area where it could be less than or equal to, it could be greater than, but we haven't checked it yet. So the next thing we do is we'll check 70 as well, and we'll find out that 70, of course, is not is going to be greater than 50. And so we end up doing nothing, and so you know that ends up moving over here. So now we've got a guarantee that from elements uh, 0 to 2 are going to be less than 50, and elements 2 to 4 will be will be greater than 50. And now we've essentially done everything. So we've got these two subarrays, uh, and all we need to do now is we need to insert 50 into the correct spot. So to insert 50 into the correct spot, it's just a simple swap operation. So if we swap 50 with 80, which is one right of the last uh, element that's, uh, that was is part of this less than or equal to subarray, then we don't change this property right here of everything being uh, greater than 50 because it doesn't matter that you know these aren't in some sort of sorted order at the end of this all we care about is that we have two subarrays that maintain uh, these two properties uh, they don't necessarily have to be sorted as we can see is kind of the case in both of these 20 10 40 is not in sorted order and then after we do the swap operation here we can kind of get rid of the barriers now after we do that we'll end up getting uh, 50 right here followed by 70, and then 80 is where uh, that gets swapped to. So in this case, we have 
uh, 50 in the exact correct spot in the total array. And then we have still some work to do on the left side. And then the right side happens to be sorted in this case, but you know, because we're not you know, checking this as we go, uh, it'll have to still you know, go through those recursive calls to check as well. So the next time this will end up being called, uh, 40 will be the pivot for this subarray, 80 will be the pivot for this subarray, and then it'll continue down and 40 will end up being put in the correct spot, 80 will get put in the correct spot, and then eventually it'll hit kind of the base case where uh, there'll only be a single element left uh, in the recursive call, and so a single element will be, to sort a single element, uh, a single element is always sorted, so there's nothing left to do there. Uh, however, here, we'll end up having to, after 40 is put in the correct spot, which will be where it is right here, we'll have to, uh, the new pivot will end up being 10, and with 10 here, it'll end up getting swapped with 20, and then finally, uh, there'll only be a single element left, and so that will be sorted as well. But that's kind of the major operations that go on. We select a pivot, we create two subarrays with those properties of less than or equal or greater than, then we insert whatever the pivot is in between those two subarrays. So let's see how it looks in code. So we'll go ahead and log in. And we'll open up our example. So in this case, we've got a simple function, of course, for swapping, uh, not terribly interesting. Uh, then we have our partition function. So our partition function is where we actually do uh, all these comparisons with the pivot. And then of course we've got a recursive function quick sort that we call. So we check to make sure that you know there's not a single element because with the single element that's already sorted so we don't need have any work to do there. If it's not a single element, if there's multiple elements in those subarrays, we'll go ahead and find a new pivot. And that new pivot will be based upon uh, partition. And so, um, Partition will, it will be what actually creates those two subarrays. And then new pivot will be uh, whatever that pivot uh, point was inserted between those two subarrays. And then we'll call quicksort on those two uh, subarrays. So in the actual partition uh, function itself, it'll take uh, whatever the left index is and then whatever the, whatever the new pivot will be. So in the case of the first call, the left index will be zero and the pivot will be uh, in our case, if we look down in the main function, we've got uh, 10 elements in an array that we're going to sort. So uh, pivot will be nine because it's an array from zero to nine and left is going to be zero again. So we, we'll go ahead and start off low as the uh, one less than the left index. And that's because uh, before we actually, um, before we actually start, we wanna make sure that uh, our marker isn't already saying that zero is included in that array that's uh, all the numbers less than or equal to uh, the pivot. So we put it kind of a, you know, a little bit before the start of the array, just to make sure that we're saying, hey, uh, nothing's there yet. So in this case of starting out left uh, for the first call, left will actually be negative one, which is an invalid index kind of signifying that uh, nothing has been added to that subarray yet. And then high, the high point that uh, we're going to go until uh, is going to be pivot minus one. So we're going to compare all the numbers up to, but not including the pivot. And then we have a simple for loop that just will go over each of those uh, numbers, just like we did. So if that number is less than or equal to the array uh, of the pivot point. So like I said, like we kind of looked at that drawing, uh, we compared each of those numbers to the pivot. If it was less than or equal to the pivot, this hello plus plus is just moving that barrier along. And then we'll go ahead and swap those elements and put them into the correct position. Then uh, finally, after this is all done, then we can just go ahead and put the pivot into the correct position. And so the pivot will be just past that barrier, so one past that barrier. And that's all we're doing right here, is we're calling swap on the array, uh, low plus one and the array of wherever the pivot is. And then we're going to go ahead and return uh, low plus one as being uh, that middle point that's in the exact correct position now. And so that will be um, where we in quick sort, we'll go ahead and uh, sort the two subarrays. So the two subarrays, the left subarray will be from whatever the left part is up to uh, 
whatever the new pivot is, minus one, because the pivot's in the correct position, so we'll go one before the new pivot. And then on the other side, we'll go one past the uh, new pivot, which is already in the correct position, uh, all the way to the very end, which will be pivot. And so in the main function itself, it's not particularly interesting. We'll just go ahead and have uh, n is equal to 10, so we'll sort 10 numbers. We'll go ahead and give it a seed of, say, one, uh, and then we'll print out the array before the sort, and then we'll print out the array uh, after the sort over here. And so we'll sort 10 random numbers between 0 and 99 inclusive. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So we'll just do g++ dash o, quick sort, and we'll go ahead and run quick sort. So we start out with, you know, an unsorted array of say 83, 86, 77, 15, 93, blah, 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 all the way to 21. And then we see at the output we get a sorted array of 15, 21, 35, 49, blah, 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 all the way up until 93. And we can, oops, and we can, uh, oh, I don't have it open anymore. And then we can go ahead and uh, we can change the seed as well. So maybe instead of a seed of one, we'll have a seed of say, you know, 20 to change the random numbers that we get. Uh, we gotta compile it first. And now we see that, you know, it still works with, you know, when we have different orderings. So that's more just for reproducibility of results. But that's going to go ahead and do it. That's the basics of quick sort, uh, choosing the last element as the pivot. As always, feel free to check out all my other stuff on uh, github.com slash coffee before arch. We've got all the stuff for all my other uh, series as well. So we looked at C++ data structures and we looked at sorting algorithms and we've got a uh, quick sort right here. So feel free to check out this code, play around with it, use it however you like. And as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and I hope you have a nice day.